this is one thing that I asked you before, uh, and and it has something to do with um, synthesizing, integrating concepts from mm. random ideas. Mm. And um, I'm coming from the, the the perspective that you can do it, you can do it really well. Meta skills is one of the for me one of the uh, greatest proofs of that. Um, seeing things happening, having these random ideas or all of these sub ideas and then elegantly integrating it into a framework of sorts. How do you teach people to do that? I'm more in as, as an educator, as a, as a, as a <laughs> consultant, I, I'd want to impart that skill to people. How well, I mean, you, you have to start, to you learn it by starting small. Okay. You do the smallest possible thing and then you make a bigger one and a bigger one, you know, writing a book like, like meta skills. Well, I mean, that's five years of work lot of research sure. i had to have a general idea of where i was going with it and then i had to do a lot of research in all the parts which mm -hmm. meant reading you know dozens of books taking notes um letting those work on me so that i would they would trigger new ideas you know uh connections between things sure all, so sure. all that takes a lot of time um most people aren't engaged in projects that big so um that's true um uh, and that's fine you, i think you start small. Um, I, I, be, I became a writer. I mean, I never thought I would be a writer. I was, I wanted to be a designer since I was seven years old. I didn't even know the word for it. I just wanted really? to do that. I wanted to make money with art. And, um, <laughs> you know, that's funny. I, I had my head heart set on that. And then I found out that well, that's seven design. years old, <laughs> <laughs> seven years old. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in school, they ask you when you're really young, what do you want to be when you grow up yep. and you write about it? You know, it's just something to write about. Uh, and I said, I want to be a commercial artist. And uh, all the kids looked at me like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, you know, I could draw and I love that. And I felt like I had, that was who I was because I had some early experiences with that. That made me think like no one else can do this that I know of my, in my age group can do this. Sure. Like draw something so that it looks so real that it, you think it's real, right? I mean, that kind of, and I, I learned how to do that um, um, just by effort, you know, just by, and then, and then I, I bring drawings to school and people go, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, once I, uh, when I was a kid, I, I copied a dollar bill. If you've ever seen an American dollar bill, it's got all this stuff on it. All yeah. this like leaves sure. and all, you know, little sure. buildings and all that. I conspiracy, copied it like- uh, Conspiracy theory inducing <laughs> details, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, oh yeah, you can do a lot with those things. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I made a dollar bill that was so realistic that uh, one of the bullies in our school uh, grabbed it out of my hand and ran away with laughing. <laughs> Got your uh, jokes anyway you. so that's the kind of stuff that you know uh, i thought was cool and um so the, you know when i got out into the field as a graphic designer i started to realize that um well gee graphic design is bound up with language it's not just visuals i mean you're going to have to have language in this and sure. that's going to communicate every bit as much maybe more and if you want to control the whole piece, whatever it is you're working on, the whole communication, you need control over that too. Otherwise, you're just some you're you know you're you're maybe partnering with somebody, but you don't really you're not controlling it yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wanted control. I just wanted <laughs> I wanted the work to be really clean and simple and have integrity. So um, I started working with uh, writers, and then but I, I found that the, it was just difficult. And I, so I thought, I'm just going to try to do it myself, mm -hmm. even though it's not my thing. Um, sure. And I just started learning to write like just headlines, just a perfect headline where there's no word out of place and it was witty or whatever it needed to be, had a lot of punch, got sure. sold to whatever it has to sell, got people to read the rest of the ad, whatever, just do that, you know? Uh, and that was hard. Um, uh, but then, you know, when you learn to do that and you start to get some confidence, you know, these are pretty good. I, I would yeah, read yeah, this, yeah. you know, yeah. and you go, well, maybe I can write the rest of the body copy too. I can write, you know, maybe a hundred words or something. And then every one of those is as good as a headline, you know, and pretty soon. Um, okay. So now I've just written an ad 
that's got a perfect headline and perfect body copy, why could I not take that same skill and write an article on something? All right. So I started writing for a design magazine, communication arts. Uh, ah. And so every paragraph of any article I wrote was as much work as every sentence was just like one of those headlines. And so, um, but I noticed I was picking up speed. Like it wasn't as hard, a little bit less hard every time. Sure. Um, and eventually you can write a book like Meta Skills because you, <laughs> you can write, right? Yeah. You know, okay. uh, you got, I you have it. control over That's your true. sentences. Sure. You can spell. But then again, even before Meta Skills, you had to go through Zag and Brand Gap and. Yeah, and right. I wasn't others, ready right? for Meta Skills until I wrote it. I couldn't have done it. I wasn't ready to write a book until I had uh, published a magazine for five years and had to work so hard to get those magazines out that my writing muscles became stronger. So, I mean, so I thought I was going to be a designer and I ended up now I'm more of a writer, but I haven't lost any of that design ability. It's just, I don't yeah. use it as much, right? I use it I on my own I think you're designing stuff. something bigger. I mean, I'm you're designing, writing, yeah, you're, yeah. yeah, that's it. Now, when I, and I would argue that anybody who starts as, as a designer and becomes a writer is probably designing what they write. I mean, they're thinking, they're coming at it, um, the same way a designer would like, how is this going to just be perfect? How is it going to be just right? Um, how's it going to feel like design is a lot about that, right? How does it, how does this make me feel? Um, sure. so, so I would contend that I'm actually designing my books as much as writing them. I mean, a, yes. the concept from the concept yes. on down. Even, you know, I've always, I've always marveled with the way you chose how to lay out the books that, the paragraphs are um, start higher on the page than, than a normal <laughs> book would. Right? right up on um, the how, edge. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. How, how you have always mentioned that these books should be read uh, in, 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 in a short play ride. Um, and, and how you also, at the end, you summarize things um, after right. the book is done. Well, so those, those are, are all little concepts that add up to something bigger, right? So each one of those is interesting on its own. Like, um, sure. I like to just, I like to, to, to take a medium, whatever it is, or, or a vehicle that everyone understands and then question every part of it. So does it really have to be that way? Does mm -hmm. type really have to be uh, 10 points in a book, sure. you know, nine or 10 points? What if it were 18? Like, is that bad? <laughs> yeah, uh, what yeah. if what if there are no margins and the type goes right up to the top? Why do we need margins? That's true. That's uh, true. Well, there are reasons we need margins, but um, I fixed it so you didn't need it. You hold a book at the yeah, bottom yeah, of the book. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can push the type all the way to the top. As long sure. as it doesn't get cut off, it's but, fine. But so, to your point earlier as to how people behave, that's how people behave. That's how people hold books. Right. So you think you just think about why things are the way they are, and then you uh, see if you can um, stretch the definition or do something different. And some of those things will just because you, you can do it doesn't mean you should. I mean, you can do anything That's in true. a weird way. That's true. There has to be That's a reason true. for it. Right. That's true. There, there's so, still, you know, right. So the, I was writing short between, books. Between that. Yeah. Right. So, but, but if my goal is to write a short book that you can read in a plane ride, that means I'm going to have fewer words but it still has to be kind of a book length object or else people won't pay for it. Right. If it's, you know, it, it, so, so my, art, uh, my art, books, art that sells. yeah, yeah. Well, my, my, those books, those, uh, those whiteboard books are um, yeah. about 18,000 words and a real book is maybe a hundred thousand. So um, what's going to happen with all that space, all those empty pages. Yes. Um, so the, so if, you know, I thought, well, bigger type, will use up some space. Uh, how do I make that interesting and cool? Um, and just the right size, not too big, right? Um, and then uh, why does the book have to be all type and maybe a few charts if it's a business book? Why can't it just be like advertising where you've got images and all kinds of stuff happening? Um, anything to make your point, right? To, to, to make true. it stronger. Why shouldn't it have variety and pacing and all the things that you see in a movie why can't it be yes. that that kind of experience yeah. you know um and and so um when you get the right combination of those things together it all starts to make sense it seems inevitable right when you sure. get it right so you know i mean i didn't know that the book would
be acceptable to people. I just thought if I'm going to do it, I don't want to, I don't want to have an ordinary book. I mean, yeah, all that work just to have an ordinary book. Um, you know, so I'm going to take a chance and e e either it'll be a home run or a strikeout. Uh, and I was ready for either one. It turned out to be a home run. And uh, I didn't even know it in the beginning. It seemed like maybe it was just a, a decent book. Uh, and then it just kept climbing the charts, climbing the charts until it was number 15 out of all the books in the world. Um, Rightly so. I that feel. was like, then I thought, well, I could do this. <laughs> but, <laughs> 15? Uh, <laughs> 15 seems like a good validation for me to continue on. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I just thought, yeah, maybe, maybe it's okay. And I did more of them. Um, but that, that was the, the one that sold the, sold the most. Um, and so there was something about the timing of that. You know, you just never know when you put something out. Uh, nobody ever knows about books, that like whole, which books are going to sell. That whole series or, really is. Yeah, really or, or music or movies. They don't, nobody knows if anything's going to work. Um, they, they, you use principles that will get you as close as you can to something that you think will work. Um, and, then, and then you just put it out there at some point and, and see. But... Uh, that's why I'm really big on having the principles, really understanding yes. like what makes something valuable, what makes it mm -hmm. connect with people, what what is it of people that this is resonating with them, what is it about what I do that's working? Um, I'm just constantly thinking about all that that stuff. But is that also so that how how um, because it's all the whole learn the rules before you break the rules saying. Yeah. So yeah. on one hand, you're saying you were breaking a lot of those rules, but also there are principles at play. What is the overall guideline? When does the principle rein in on, on the irreverence, if you will? Yeah, I mean, the, when we talk about rules, um, it's a little misleading. They aren't really rules. Um, they're best practices. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're useful to know, but I think they're really useful to think about. Like think about why that has become a rule or a best practice. Um, what is that it's solving? What, what, would, what is it like when you don't use that rule? What happens? Um, and um, then you start to, to realize that everything can be manipulated. You know, everything can be, you, you know, you, you can, as long as you understand what you're doing, like you have a, your own reason for doing it, and you've looked at it from four or five different angles and you you know i think it, it works it's not sure it's not a win lose where hey i do something but it's horrible <laughs> it's not irresponsible it's not, right it's it's still yeah, it's like, like what you said you you, you can it. you can quest you should question you should challenge but yeah. not for the sake of you you yeah. you explore the I, varieties and the paradigms and the yeah. perspectives like what you said yeah i mean i love being innovative and doing things that haven't been done before thrilling but I also appreciate um, timeless things and classic yes. things that yes. um, are that way for a reason. I mean, uh, history has proven them workable and right and beautiful. Um, and I, I adore things like that too. So, I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a, a freestyle designer. I, I don't have a style I wanna bring to anything. I let the purpose of the project dictate the means, you know, yeah. in the style. Um, yeah. not everyone can do that Some people are just born with style and that's who they are they just they have this one thing that they do to, to that point and 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 I, i'd want to connect this to one of my last questions that i sent you um there are people who are set in their ways who have their own styles that's what you said but now that you are more and more exposed to uh, with level c uh helping people transform and evolve how do you help them evolve out of that well i mean we do it with exercises but i do i do try to bring them closer to that ideal of uh having a fresh eye on things a fresh mind bringing uh innovation to it i think that's why people come to the classes they're looking for some way to be more original uh, sure. within the framework of branding um and so there are ways to do it i mean I think I pretty much everything I know, I kind of forced myself to learn. I don't think that I was a natural at any of this, you know, yeah, yeah. everything has to be learned, especially with language. If you're learning to write, there's no born 
born writers, you know, people that just born with, they can just, you know, Shakespeare, what didn't come out of the womb, yeah. writing plays and sonnets. Yeah. You had to learn it the hard way, just like anybody else. Um, it just takes a lot of work. Um, there are some people that are born geniuses, like in math and music. Uh, I think you could probably say that, like, you know, at three years old, there's they're playing. something innate. To be in, 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 yeah. yeah, there's something about that kind of part of the brain that there are people that um, are, are just really clear about that. Just they're wired that way. Um, but everything else, including design, is something you have to learn uh, by doing over and over. It's mastery. And there's no shortcut to it. So all I do in my classes is I invite people who have some skills already that relate to branding, um, that are valuable to branding, and I show them the framework uh, in which they're working. And then, then we can uh -huh. say, okay, like here's where you fit, and this is where you can be successful in this. And th these are the kinds of people that you're gonna need to work with to make a, to, to you're gonna have to collaborate with these people to, to make a brand, right? And so you need to know where you fit and you need to bring some skills to it that only you have. Um, and so let's, let's work on those. And so they may need a little bit of help with some of these things, uh, like, you know, like writing a headline, for example. Um, sure. um, but, but that's a good point because you're starting from where they are. We're starting from where they are. We're saying you've got skills already. We're not teaching yeah. you from scratch. This isn't a university where you're 18 years old and you're, you you're know, you're, you're a blank slate. No, you you already know some great things. Um, you're just going to apply those. You're going to learn how to apply that in this in the in a in that's a, a good brand way system. of winning them over and 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 gently coaxing them into yeah and then when you start you know when you start um having goals for yourself you're kind of motivated to learn new things i mean that it's really nobody learns anything unless they're motivated to do it and because it requires well, change that's true that change true. is right. hard for people and painful in some ways at some sort of psychological level it's painful uh, you have to That's abandon true. existing ideas that were comfortable to you and head off in some new direction. You have to be kind of uh, kind of uh, adventurous that way. So um, you're either ready for that or not. Um, and you know, like you, I had a mentor, and it was uh, was really valuable. So who, um, who was it, if I may? Uh, my mentor was a man named uh, Robert Overby, Bob Overby. He was a really good graphic designer as a young man. He hung around in a group of people who they all became famous studio owners uh, that whole generation. They used to st sure. they had study groups together at Art Center and uh, Chenard, I think was the other place. Um, he got out into the field, uh, immediately did beautiful work. Um, and um, then he got a he got a chance to uh, work for CBS the 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 TV network sure and in in um, uh, turning the whole like the whole headquarters into an art gallery so buying all the wow. art right that would really look good so he was chosen as a guy who knew art right and he's buying art for them and they got a huge budget and everything he's going you know. This is great, but I could be doing some of this art. I mean, it saved them some money, and I like doing it. I could be, I could do this. You know, I can do something like this. And he started uh, doing his, some of his own paintings, and they were fine. They paid him for that too. But as he was doing it, he, he was like, he was hooked. He went, "God, this is hard." <laughs> I had no idea that <laughs> how much was involved in doing like a piece of abstract art or something. You know, or it's just like. Where do you even start? It was like more intriguing than graphic design to him. And so he became a painter, um, wow. but he was never interested in like becoming a famous painter. It wasn't about that for him. It was just, I wanna do this, I wanna do this work. I, I like who I am when I'm doing it. I like what I have to think about. It's rich, it's deep. Uh, and he always resisted like selling his paintings. So they just collected, you know, uh, and eventually when he died, it all went to museums and everything. And now they're showing his work, but it wasn't even very well understood at the time. They didn't get what he was doing because he wasn't, he wasn't following any particular uh, trend. And so that's sure. the way the artwork, where, you know, everybody wants to know, there's, a, there's always a conversation going on in, in, in the fine art community and you're either in the conversation or you're not. So if you do something that doesn't fit with what people are talking about, 
you're out of the conversation. Yeah, you, you don't, your work doesn't mean anything, but sure. he didn't care. He was, um, and, but, but so he had uh, a schedule that allowed him to spend time with me. And um, I don't know if you, how much time you have, I'll tell you how I met him though, if you, if you five I'm, minutes. I'm, no, I'm, I, I, I'd love to hear it. Well, I had a studio, I was a young designer. Um, I pretty much was self-taught after Art Center. I, I kind of, uh, I left before I graduated. Uh, I just was so eager to get out there. And so I was at this sort of uncomfortable stage where you don't know enough to be really yeah. great, but you're learning yeah, like yeah. crazy. And I was doing well all of a sudden. I was winning lots of major national awards for my work at, and I was only 27. I was, so I was pretty like thinking I, uh, I'm, I'm making it, you know, I'm really doing well here. And um, I had a nice, uh, retail space turned it into a studio with another designer and out in the front we had um, uh, a showcase area where all of our work was on uh, like a revolving you know gallery kind of thing and I'm working away around the corner hidden around the corner at my desk working on some project and I hear the little bell tink you know it's like okay get up and it's this homeless guy walks in it's got like he's got holes in his pants and his shoes are all dirty um he's just got a t-shirt half halfway hanging out and uh looks like he hasn't shaved and he's like standing in in our gallery area our meeting area where everything's like perfect and the lights and it, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> showcasing them. and he's looking at all this stuff he's, and he's paging through some of the uh annual reports that i had done and i walk in and i said can i help you and he goes this your stuff and I said, yeah, these, this is my work. Uh, this work here, this one on this wall, is this your? I said, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he goes, well, your type is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> your type sucks, he said, basically. Uh, and I said, excuse me? He goes, it sucks. It sucks. And I said, what are you looking at? He goes, look, look at this right here. Look at this column of type. I said, yeah. I said, this one in word last last month. This one, this one of a gold, okay? He goes, he says, so? <laughs> Doesn't change the fact. Yeah. And I said, and I said uh, okay, what's wrong with it? And he goes, what's wrong with it? Just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't give you the answer, right? You, you have give me to the figure answer. it out yourself. Just look at it. So anyway, um, he says, yeah, I used to do this stuff. I used to do this stuff a lot. Uh, I worked with this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And, uh, and I went, and what are you doing now? He goes, I'm a, I'm a painter. I just, uh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of it, doing something else. And I said, we got into a little conversation and um, and he left and I just thought, wow, is that weird? Um, <laughs> you know. And then a week later he comes back and he goes, he comes in, just walks in and he goes, wanna go to lunch? Was Around lunch how, old, so I, how old was he at this time? He was about 40, I would say. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he was about 40. Uh, I think when he was maybe 30, 35, he switched over to painting. Uh, but he was a, a successful, very young, really a genius, you know, at design. Well, when I met him, he was doing the the identity for Toyota <laughs> while being a painter. Wow! Uh, through another agency, and he would take he would drop by um, or call last minute, you know, maybe once a week, and say, yeah, "Want to do lunch? Want to go to lunch?" And we would, and we would talk about art, and we would talk about all kinds of stuff. He'd in and he'd see me working on something. I felt like covering it up whenever he came in because he would <laughs> have a critique of everything, and he goes says, oh, come on, let me see it. What are you working on? And I'd show him something. He goes, oh, well, I mean, if you're going to do that, you got to look at Paul Rand or you got to look at Alexei yeah. Brodovich. Um, you can't just go doing that stuff. You've got to see what went before. You, you, you're, you're, you're reinventing the wheels here. You, you could do much better. And uh, if I question him, he go, just give me a piece of tracing paper. And he'd put it over the top. And he'd immediately say, like, if you did this, this, and this, like, now he got something new. You know, just don't do that. Don't just don't do stuff you've seen before, and make sure you've seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, see a lot of stuff, <laughs> I and like don't that. and I don't like repeat that. it. Like, learn from it, don't repeat it. 
and uh, it's like and a it was, Buddhist koan, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's part of like that's just baked into my teaching now. It's don't do what other people are, have done. Appreciate it and do something like it, perhaps, but don't don't copy it because um, I mean the thing about originality is that is that it can't be copied. That's the beauty of originality, sure. just by definition copy that's no longer original so don't do it it's not gonna it's not gonna do the same thing for you that it did for the originator that's true. you have to be an original you have to be that's your own true. original and that that takes um effort and yes. uh a, a state of mind like that's you know it doesn't come natural to people to be original in fact sure. it's scary sure. What you want to, what people do is they learn from each other. They watch somebody else do something and then, then they try to do it. And eventually they can do the same thing, which is the way we learn. You have yes. to push beyond that and say, now yes. I'm going to do something where, you know, people can learn from this because it's new. What I actually find um, ironic is that a lot of quote unquote creativity and design um, teachers uh, mm -hmm. or facilitators are not creating their own frameworks or their own materials but simply rehashing it's, other people's works right. which is super ironic it's super ironic um you know or you see brand people um you know writing books and they're not very well trained. it's like have you learned nothing <laughs> <laughs> you know that's even I worse mean, than what i said <laughs> it's bad yeah. uh, it's it's like you don't even believe in it do you you don't believe in design yeah branding. yeah it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. uh i you know uh, uh, don't get me started i i just want to ask again circling back one of the recurring themes earlier that you kept mentioning is really learning about what your customers what people um are are are, are coming where, where they're coming from and then you mentioned something about psychology earlier um in my own practice one of the things that we do which we do differently is that our strategies are always rooted in our psychologists insights. So we have a, a, um, Good. a clinical psychologist actually, when we approached him, he said, I don't know anything about brands. I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, yeah. I'm a clinical psychologist. I, my skills would be understanding people, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, that's why we need you. Yeah. And the way he does it, he, he, he applies the same, style the same um questioning approaches and tricks mm -hmm. um that that a successful clinical psychologist would do um we all know when you're talking to someone who's depressed someone with mental concerns it's not easy to make them open up to share their innermost feelings let alone their motivations and all of these things so he applies his process on our clients customers to extract those things that that we need to know so that's our approach i want to know yours because you kept mentioning that you need to know what people need and all that so and and, and again i mean we know that right we need to know what people need but how do you well, successfully... i mean i think we we have used more anthropological approaches you know yes. um, um sort of trying to be uh, observers that without interfering in people's lives yeah um um, just seeing what they really do, not what they asking what they say. People don't even know what they actually do. They they have yes. one idea of how they behave, and then they do something different. It just drives you nuts. Yeah. So you need to find out what's really going on with them. I look for about two thirds of people saying the same thing. When I get two thirds of people, when I see that pattern, I go, "That's the right one. That's that's it. That's the right one. That's probably that's good true." Enough, right? You never get a hundred percent. So, but um, if you get a really mixed um bunch of feedback then then it's hard to make anything out of that you need, you're looking for patterns you're looking for something that people say over and over that you didn't see uh when you were working on it right I mean, i'm talking about that's testing true. prototypes that's true um, that's true because you're just not going to see it very easily from their point of view you're going to always yeah. be looking at it from your point of view no matter what you do it's just hard to get away from that but then, but then you start saying, ah, okay, now that I, I, I see why they're getting that from, from whatever part yeah, of that yeah, work. Yeah. Uh, and I can fix that, or that's just not going to work. That's, that's, sure. that's not going to work for that audience. Um, so I, I, I kind of like, I do like to get information before starting, but mm -hmm. it's not even necessary as long as you have enough prototypes where you can 
get them in yes. front of people and find out right from them. You'll, you, if you know how to ask the right questions, for example, you never ask someone, which one do you like? That is not yeah. a question that's going to get anywhere. So, um, but you might say, which one did you notice first? Why did you notice it? Mm -hmm. uh, and the what, what probing spoke to you is very about important. That? You have to probing keep probing. So you have to have a conversation with it's not a poll that you're taking. You have to um, listen to what they say and it, whatever they say, there's going to be a lead in there for you to follow up on. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, let's yeah. go, let's talk about that. And then let's That's talk true. about that and go That's deeper true. and deeper. Uh, and then, and then uh, you know, you have, you have to have a real rich conversation. But those are the kinds of things that you should be doing yourself as a designer mm. so that you're learning about the customers rather than, give that to a firm or give it to somebody else to yeah, be there, right. you know, be there, be part of that. So I mean, it, that if goes. designers want to want to have their profession taken seriously, they have to prove that their work is good. I think it's up to them to prove it. Um, well, and, and that's kind of the phase we're in. It's learning how to do that right now. Uh, so we can get that seat at the table sure. uh, and have a bigger effect on, on the, the, the direction of industry basically on, on businesses and, and not just be um, cosmetic, you know, purveyors of cosmetics, you know, I mean, we, we really want to have design be part of uh, all the decision making that goes on. Maybe that's the biggest misconception, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marty, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I won't take up much of your time anymore. Again, as I said earlier, I'm super thankful um, that you've always been so generous of your time uh, and, and, and your insights. And I would always treasure this, uh, this, this call, this conversation. Well, it was so great to finally meet you, Aaron. We've been talking I know. Uh, for so many years now. Okay, Aaron, it's thank so you. good to talk Again, to you. Um, thank you. Good, thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay.